Access forms and reports summarize large data sets, so you should set filters to limit the data to just what you're interested in. In this movie, I'll show you how to allow, disallow, and set filters using the me keywords properties. For this movie, we will use the client's form to attach our code to, but I want to show you the contents of the client's table because that's what we're going to be basing our filters on. So in the navigation pane, I'll double click the client's table. This table contains 12 records and there are client IDs 101 to 112 in sequential order. And each of the companies are just made up companies and I gave each of them a color name. So with that information in mind, and again, there are 12 records with numbers 101 through 112 in order. I'll press Control W to close the table. And now I'll right click the client's form object in the navigation pane and click design view. Now in design view, I'll click anywhere on the form, click build event, and then in the choose builder dialog box, click code builder, and then click OK. And when I do, Access creates a code module for the event of clicking in the details section of the form. That's actually not the event I want to use. I want to run this code when the form is loaded. So just under the title bar, I'll click the object list down arrow and click form. And when I do, I get a form load event. That is what I want to use. So I'll press enter twice and the up arrow key once to give myself a little room to work. And now I'll type code that prevents users from using filters on the form. So I'll type me, M-E, period. Then the property is allow filters, all one word, A-L-L-O-W, F-I-L-T-E-R-S, space, then an equal sign. And we'll set it to false, turning filters off. So F and then tab and then a down arrow. So this code turns filters off. If you don't do anything, filters are allowed. So the value defaults to true. Now I'll press Alt F11 and go back to the form. Press Control W to close it. And then in the dialog box that appears, click Yes to save your changes. You just save the code that is attached to the form. Now back in the navigation pane, double click the client's form to open it. And when you do, even though you didn't see it, Access ran the code that prevents filters. Now if I click on the Home tab of the ribbon, you see that all of the filter options in the Sort and Filter group are grayed out. So I can't create a filter. I am clicking on it now, but nothing's happening. Then also Selection Filter, Advanced Filter, and Toggle Filter on and off are not allowed. Now press Alt F11 and go back. And I'll set the Allow Filters property to True and press enter. Now I'm going to show you how to use the filter property. And the filter property is used to display or to set a filter. To do that, I'll go back to the form by pressing Alt F11 and then right clicking the forms tab in the database window and clicking design view. And I'll add a command button that will run the code that I want. So I'll click in the controls group on the design contextual tab, a button, and then draw the button in the forms header. I'll click cancel because I don't want to run any of the macros available there. Then right click the command button, click build event, then in the choose builder dialog box click code builder and click OK. So now I have a click event for command button number eight which was the button I was working with. And just give myself a little space to work with. Now when the button is clicked, I want to show the filter, and we'll do that in a message box. So I'll type in msg, b-o-x, space, and then me, m-e, period, filter, f-i-l-t-e-r, and then press tab. And a down arrow to clear the super tooltip that appears. So what this will do is when the command button is clicked, it will open a message box displaying text describing the filter. So I'll press Control S and then Alt F11 to go back. And just to make things a little bit more clear, I'll go ahead and edit the command button. To do that, I select the text inside of the command button and I'll call it show filter, S-H-O-W space F-I-L-T-E-R and press enter. Now I'll press Control S to save the form and then Control W to close it. Now I'll double click the client's form to open it and we see the show filter button here in the header. Now I'm going to apply a filter. So I'll click the Home tab and then click the Filter button. 
and I'll do a number filter and make it less than. I'll create a filter that will show any client ID that is less than or equal to 105. Press enter to accept this filter. So the filter has been applied. So I have client ID 101 and we see one of five down here. So there's 101, 102, 103, 104, and 105. Now if I click the show filter command button, access displays a message box indicating that within the client's table, the client ID field must contain a value of less than or equal to 105. That's a great way to find out precisely what filter is applied. I'll go ahead and click OK. And then I'll click toggle filter to get rid of the filter. And then click filter again and click clear filter from client ID. Now when I click the show filter button, it comes up blank because no filter is applied. Whenever you set a filter on a form, be sure to remove the filter before you close the form. You won't lose any data by leaving the filter turned on, but your users might not realize it's there and believe you're missing data you actually have. If you give them a way to show the filter, then they can make sure that nothing is applied, or if there is, they can know exactly what it is.